Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, we've gone over aliases, which are names that we create for Unix or Corn Shell commands. And we do this for a couple reasons. One is sometimes we want a short name for a very long command. Another reason could be that the Unix or Corn Shell command is hard to remember. So instead, we create an alias with an easy name that's easy to remember. And the last reason we use aliases is to protect ourselves from harmful situations. As in this alias right here that's commented out, I've used as an example where our print alias becomes equivalent to print space dash capital R. So every time we have a string that begins with a dash, the print statement can still handle it. Now say you have a bunch of aliases that you like and you want to put them in all your files or a bunch of them. So that means you have to remember where all those files are and when you cut and paste you could make a mistake. Not good. And plus it's going to take you a long time. So Corn Shell lets you take all your aliases and functions and variables, whatever you want, and put them in one file and then access them from your script. So when you want to update your aliases, you just update this one file and every single script that you write will then have the updated list. That is what we're going over today storing aliases in a file. Goes over how to store aliases in a common file and access them in a corn shell script. Let's take a look at how we would first access the file. This is the magic right here. What you do is you have a dot all by itself. It doesn't have to be the first character in the line, but it does have to have space around it. And then you just provide it with the name of a file. And what this does is it will take this file right here, take the contents of it, and just plop it down right here in your script. So it's as if you actually took and wrote that code and put it right here. Now a couple important things to note. Whatever you put in this file is not known until this point. So you can't access anything in this file above it. And the example I'm going to do is D1U, which will be an alias that is defined in this file. And you will see that corn shell will complain about this because it doesn't know what it is. However, we're going to take and source the script. That's what this dot is called. It's called sourcing a file. We're going to source this aliases file. And inside of the aliases file is an alias called D1U. So after we source this file, we should be able to run the D1U alias. So to make all the aliases from a file known to this script, do the following. You have a period by itself, a space, and then a file name. Could be more than one white space if you want. And once again, this dot slash means look in my present directory and my file name is called aliases. Let's take a look at aliases. Here we are in the aliases file. It holds aliases and functions. I probably picked a bad name for the file, but it's just an example. And looking at what is actually in here, we define a couple aliases. And here is our D1U, which will be equal to the Unix command date dash u, which means the date that goes through England, the universal date. And 
I actually just put a print statement in here to show you that you can run commands in a file that you source. And I defined a function called hello, and it just prints in hello, and then prints a blank line. Once again, looking at our code, this right here is the first executable statement, d1u. Corn shell doesn't know what d1u is, so it's going to complain. Afterward, we go down and we source our aliases file. So whatever was in aliases gets plopped right here. So all those alias definitions, that print statement, and the function definition all get put right here, and every single one of those commands gets run. So after this line, we should be able to run the d1u alias and the hello function. Let's run the script and see what happens. Our script name is aliases3.ksh. We run it, and as you can see, it complains at line 27 in our script that it doesn't know what d1u is, not found, no such file or directory. Afterward, we source our aliases file, and here we are inside of it. And afterward, we once again run the d1u command, the d1u alias, and it does, in fact, give us the time, the universal time, as you can see right there. And then we run our function called hello. And it did, in fact, know what the hello function was. So once again, if you want to store a bunch of aliases or functions or commands that you want to access from a bunch of different scripts, put them in one file call it whatever you like, and you access it by putting a dot, a space, and then the name of the file. And it is as if you actually put all that code from that file right here.